Hi, I'm Kelly, and I'm here with Addie. We're going to make one of Ruby's recipes called Baked Mozzarella Bites. And we already have some cooking in the oven, and they smell really good, so I can't wait to get started. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need panko, which is the, it's Japanese-style bre bread breadcrumbs. I almost called them breadsticks. That's not <laughs> quite right. Japanese-style breadcrumbs, and you can find those in the breadcrumb area at your grocery store, so along with all the other regular breadcrumbs. Or if you can't find them there, you can probably find them in the Asian section, too. Um, so that's another place to look. So what we did before is we uh, used the panko, and we put them just in a pan to brown them. Did you see how they look kind of a lighter color mm -hmm. when we started out? And then we toasted them. And then um, another thing that you're going to need is you're going to need mozzarella sticks. We'll cut those up in a little bit. We need some marinara sauce for dipping and we need some egg substitute, which you said yourself, that looks like liquid eggs and that's exactly what it is. It's mostly egg whites. So it's supposed to be a little healthier version. So let's get started. Um, we already have our panko that we put just in a skillet and browned probably like on medium high for a few minutes, but you're gonna wanna watch it carefully because it can get hot pretty quickly. So so um, round those for a couple minutes, then we put them in this baking dish. And Addie cut some of these pieces up ahead of time, but can you cut up another one? What we did is you cut it into how many pieces? Four. About four pieces. So Addie, why don't you go ahead and cut that last mozzarella stick up into four okay. pieces so you can show our viewers how it's done. Great job on that. Okay, so you can kind of set that knife off to the side for a little bit because we don't need <clears> that anymore. And you're going to use one of these little grabbers to pick up a mozzarella stick, so if you like to copy me. Okay. And we are going to dip them into the egg substitute like this. And then you roll them around in the panko. They're slippery little guys, aren't they? <laughs> okay. And then after we do that, we're going to put them over here on our baking sheet. And what you're gonna to want to do is you're going to spray your baking sheet with some cooking spray. I'm not sure that we did that yet for this one, but that's okay. We're just gonna put them on there. You might wanna do that so they don't stick and we're gonna space them out a little bit, maybe a couple inches apart. So let's go ahead and grab some more and dip in the egg substitute. Roll it in the, <laughs> did you lose one? <laughs> that's why it's probably good that we're not using our fingers, right? Yeah. That would be really messy. If you don't have anything like these fancy little um, wooden tongs, you could probably just use some regular metal ones or plastic ones if you have at home. I would. Or even a fork. That would work, right? So, Eddie, you are from Toledo, right? Yes, I am. And you came down here to help us today. Let's do maybe one more, and then we're going to get our mozzarella sticks out of the oven because we don't want them to burn, do we? All right, they've been in there probably about three or four minutes, and we probably don't want to have them in there too much longer mozzarella bites these are going to be a little healthier too because they're not deep fried right we're baking them so that's going to save a lot on the calories and make it a lot more healthful so i have oh. oops i'm sorry i okay. stashed my oven mitt down here i'm going to open this up and take these out oh my goodness they smell good and this is what the finished product looks like if you want to come back here and join me Addie. I'm gonna lay those down and we'll move those out of the way. And the last step is just putting these baked mozzarella bites over here next to the marinara sauce and you might wanna heat that up because you know you might have company coming. You know who's coming right now? Ruby. Oh. Hey Ruby, how are you? Ruby, this is what we've made for you. We have baked mozzarella bites and if you'd like the recipe, you can join us online Look up WBGU.org and you'll find this recipe and many other delicious Ruby recipes. Addie, thanks for helping me. You did a great job. And thanks, Ruby, for stopping by. Hi, I'm Kelly and I'm here with Addie and we are going to show you how to make a couple of really fun Ruby's recipes. We are going to be making Ruby groovy smoothies. So we'll do that first and then we are going to make some critters on a log. 
So ready to get started? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we are going to make the groovy smoothie. And first thing that we need is we need some yogurt. You could really use any kind of yogurt you like. So I'm going to put the yogurt in the blender. And would you please start to chop up a couple of bananas, please? So while Addie's chopping the bananas, I'll get the yogurt in here. Any flavor will do. This is a nice healthy snack. It's very easy to make. Okay, why don't you go ahead and chop that one up while I put the bananas inside. And then we're also, instead of using ice to make our smoothie frozen tasting, I guess, or nice and cold, we're going to use some frozen fruit. So you could buy frozen fruit. Why don't you go ahead and put that in there? Okay. Addie's gonna add the banana. You can, you can buy frozen fruit in the freezer section at the grocery store, or you could probably freeze your own. What kind of fruit would you pick if you had a choice in your um, smoothie? Do you like this kind of fruit, or would you maybe add some different kinds? I would add strawberry and banana. You like I strawberry like and banana? I think that's a good combination, too. Why don't you go ahead and dump those in there? I think I like those, too. I even like strawberry and banana yogurt. That could even be good, like the double strawberry and banana type of thing. Okay, so now I'm going to put the ingredients that are in the blender here. We're going to blend this up. I want to make sure that I put my lid on. Giving me a little bit of a hard time, but that's okay. Move it over here. And I'm gonna turn it on. I'll blend it up. So, it might take a couple minutes, right? You know what I got to thinking after we put the ingredients in? We should have probably put the strawberries in first, like the frozen strawberries and then added the ingredients on top. But we could do that next time, right? Because then maybe the that frozen fruit that took a while to chop up could chop up even faster. But I think it turned out okay. Looks like there's a couple bananas in there, but I like chunky bananas. What about you? So do I. Okay, sounds good. So that works, right? Now let's see if we can get this off. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Let's move some of these things off to the side. Go ahead and spoon up the frozen smoothies. Why don't you go ahead and put a couple of scoops in yours and then we'll get to making some critters on a log. That sounds good to me. Okay. Should I pour it? Yeah. Okay, let's just go for that. Oh, that's so much easier. Perfect. Okay. You know, I want to hurry up and make these critters on a log, so let's take this over here because we have a special guest that's coming. Have you ever met Ruby? She's our mascot. Ruby really? the red-eyed tree frog. She's oh, going to be yeah. here in a couple minutes. So let's get our critters made. Why don't you go ahead and you're going to do cream cheese topped with goldfish crackers. And I am going to do the traditional ants on a log. Do you have a knife? So we cut up and cleaned up some celery, and I'm spreading peanut butter on mine. And Addie, what are you using? You're using cream cheese? Yes, ma'am. What flavor of cream cheese is that? What does it say? Is that strawberry? Yeah. Okay, so she's spreading strawberry cream cheese. I'm going to add some raisins to make ants. And Addie is going to, she could either do raisins or goldfish crackers. So we can eat some awesome Ooh. critters on a log. That's okay. Log rolled over, but it can roll back, right? <laughs> that looks really pretty. Oh, here, Ru Ruby's coming right now. So we've got two almost ready to go for you, Ruby. Ruby, do you like ants on a log and critters on a log? Great. Well, Ruby, if you like this recipe or you would like to get the recipe for our smoothie that we made, you can go to wbgu.org. And I'm glad that you were able to join us today. And thank you, Addie, for helping.
Hi, I'm Kelly. And this is Addie. And we are going to be making a fruity flower snack. So the things that you need to get started is we need pita bread, strawberries. What else do we need? Grapes. Grapes. And lastly, we've got some yogurt. Oh, also don't forget the peanut butter or whatever you're going to make uh, your pita bread sandwich with. So we're going to get started with that. Addie is actually going to start by um, cutting out a flower pot shape out of the pita bread and she's going to use kitchen scissors. Kitchen scissors are pretty sharp, so she's going to be careful. Um, Addie's 10 years old, is that right? Okay. And where are you from, Addie? Toledo. Toledo. Hi. Okay. So she knows what she's doing with this and go ahead and cut out the um, flower pot shape. You can tell that we've already have one pre-made. Over here we have um, that pita shape um, was round and we already cut that out and she's just going to cut another one. So you could probably make, it looks like you could make four or five flower pots out of one pita bread, couldn't you? So she's going to cut that and we thought about the fact that you've got a nice little pita bread here, right? You could make a little sandwich for your plate. You could put peanut butter on the inside. What else could you put inside of a sandwich? You could put some ham and cheese. Ham and cheese or tuna fish, salad, chicken salad, whatever you like, right? So for this today, we're just going to use peanut butter. So Eddie, would you spread some peanut butter on the inside of this flour pot, which is really a piece of pita bread, right? This is a pretty healthy snack too, right? This isn't like your potato chips and, and soda snack. This is like, we've got some good protein here with the peanut butter. Um, some good low calorie carbohydrates with the pita bread and then we have a variety of fruits and we have some dairy with the yogurt so we've got a really nice healthy snack here so looks wonderful Addie would you put that down on our plate we're going to start assembling our flour and today we have um, some pretty red grapes would you cut those in half please you could also use green grapes to make it look even more like a flower stem if you would like to, but I think that the purple and red colored grapes are really pretty. So what you're going to do there is, could you go ahead and assemble those on the plate to make like a, a stem shape? What else do you think we could use besides grapes to do something like this? Can you think of any other fruits we could use? Maybe like blue, um, blueberries? Yeah. Pineapple? We could really use any kind of grape or fruit and cut that up and, and make it into our um, flower stem shape. The next thing we're gonna do is, just give that a little stir. Can you put a dollop or a drop of yogurt in the middle of the plate and then we'll decorate around it with our flower petals. Any flavor of yogurt is great. You could use, if you really wanted to make it look flower-like, maybe some lemon yogurt. The kind that we have here is actually a lemon flavor, but it's a little bit of a light color, but I think that smells really good, doesn't it? I can smell the, the lemony smell. Hattie, you did a great job. Last thing that we need to do is add the petals. Would you cut the strawberries in half, please? Yep, just like that. Watch your fingers, make sure they stay back. We'll do some safe cutting. In fact, even with strawberries, you could probably get away with using um, a plastic knife or a butter knife in the kitchen, but Addie's being real careful, so I think that's all you need. And then if you would arrange the strawberries around the plate to make them look like flower petals, that'll finish off our fruity flower snack. And we have Ruby, she's gonna be stopping by. We made one for her and um, she loves fruit. Ruby, don't you love fruit? Yeah? Okay, if you would like this recipe as well as other yummy Ruby recipes, you can go online to wbgu.org. Again, it's wbgu.org. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, Addie, and thanks, Ruby. Hi, I'm Kelly, and this is Addie, and she's going to help me make one of Ruby's wonderful recipes today. It's called Orange Fluff Jello Salad. It's actually very good. We already have some that we made. I made this up yesterday, and it's been in the refrigerator, so it's nice and cold and delicious. 
And what we will start out by doing what we've already done because we don't have an hour to wait for Jello to set up, do we? Not today, we don't. So I made this ahead of time and Addie's gonna show you the boxes, but we had, um, we used one box of cook and serve vanilla pudding. So it's the cook and serve kind, not the instant. And then any kind of orange gelatin, the larger box, what you do is you boil two cups of water on the stove top and you dissolve the gelatin and the vanilla pudding cook and serve into that and then you pour it into a bowl and then it sets up for about an hour and the other ingredients that you're going to need is you're going to need some uh, a 16 ounce which is a pretty good size cool whip container and make sure you thaw that out ahead of time because it takes at least an hour in the refrigerator to thaw because usually you find them in the frozen food section. Then you're going to need a bag of mini marshmallows, a 20 ounce can of pineapple tidbits, um, and also a can of mandarin oranges. Make sure you drain those fruit cans ahead of time. And then if you would like to, you can add some bananas to it. We're not gonna do that today, but that's an option. Don't um, put the bananas into the last minute though because if you leave bananas sit out too long, they get kind of like brown, brown looking. They don't really look like um, what ban fresh bananas look like. So on to our recipe. You ready to help me? Sounds good. Okay, so first of all, we have this mixture of the vanilla pudding that I talked about with the orange jello that we dissolved in water and it has been in the refrigerator for over an hour and it's set up now. So because it's set up, it's not gonna be that easy to mix. So we're just going to take a mixer like this and just kind of blend it enough that you can mix the other ingredients into it. Okay. Hmm. That's probably pretty good. Looks like I have a little extra. You want to help me get that jello out of that one? The beater. There's a little spoon over there if you want to. Oh, I'm sorry. Woo. Look at that fly. Okay. That's perfect. Looking good. Smells good, doesn't it? That's good. So if you don't really like orange jello flavor that much, you could use other flavors, right? You could use strawberry, and then maybe you'd sub in strawberries for your mandarin oranges. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add most of this Cool Whip container. Our bowl's not, it's big, but it's not huge. Would you like to dish this out? Go ahead. So put most of that Cool Whip in there and then we'll see how much room we have left over. So we're going to add, if you've got a big enough bowl, just put the whole thing in, that's fine. And then Addie, why don't you go ahead right now and mix up that whipped cream with that Jello and pudding mixture. Just mix it all through until the um, whipped cream gets that orange flavoring. And then you are going to add your can of mandarin oranges. So I'm just going to add that in while you mix. Keep mixing. And Addie, why don't you go ahead and dump the um, pineapple into the mixture as well. This is really colorful. It's pretty. It smells good. If you use a low-fat Cool Whip or a fat-free Cool Whip, it's a little healthier. That's okay. Okay, keep mixing. And then we have a half of our mini marshmallows. So we do have a little sugar. This is, of course, a dessert. And then after you finish making this, you'll want to put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour. This is something that you could make in advance. Like if you had a party that you wanted to take it to, you could make it the day before or the night before. It looks really pretty. And the more you mix it, the more orangey it will look. Looks really good. I can't wait to try it. What about you? Me too. Yeah, looks great. And I think Ruby's coming over for a visit. She's coming to try it. Ruby, I hope you like orange fluff jello salad. Looks great, doesn't it? Thanks for coming by. If you would like this recipe or other recipes, go online to wbgu.org. Thanks for watching.
Hi, I'm Kelly and this is Philip. Philip's joining me today. We are going to make some delicious acorn kisses and we are also going to be making a ruby snack. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Philip, how old are you? I am eight. You're eight, okay. And you're from the Toledo area? Mm -hmm. And you came all the way down here to Bowling Green to mm -hmm. help me out? And yes. I appreciate that. So we are going to start to make one of Ruby's recipes. And when you're finished, they look like this. What do you think these look like? Acorns. They look like acorns, but really they're made out of, we have Hershey Kisses. kisses. Remember what those are called? Nutter Butter Snacks? Nutter Butters. Mm-hmm. And then we also have chocolate chips. So what we do first to start off is you take about a third of a bag of chocolate chips and you put them in a bowl. So use like a 12 ounce bag of chocolate chips, put about a half to a third of the bag in a bowl and you microwave it. And then Philip stirred this up for me, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Until it was melted all the way. So we did that a little while ago. And then what you do is you find the Nutter Butter Bites and those are in the cookie aisle. And they're in kind of a bag that can be resealable. So you'll, you'll find it by looking for, for a bag that looks like that. Okay. And then the last thing that you need are the Hershey Kisses. And what did we have to do with our Hershey Kisses, Philip, before we started? Um, we had to get a toothpick and get that and rub it, get the uh -huh. chocolate syrup and rub it all yeah. over it. We and used stick it like it to glue. There. But what did we have to do? Remember what we did with these beforehand? We had to take all the wrappers off of them, right? But you're right. We use we're using the melted chocolate like glue. So that's what we're gonna do. So Philip, let's show them how to make a few. So you start out with the nutter butter um, bite and then. Take a Hershey Kiss, so Philip's gonna assemble this, and you are going to put some of, just like you described, this melted chocolate on the bottom of the Hershey Kiss, so go ahead and do that. So get a little bit, you can use the knife, or if you wanna use a cute or a toothpick. Wait, what am I doing? Well, that's okay. Right here. We're, can you just use this? Yeah, you can use that, that's fine. So we have some toothpicks. You don't need toothpicks, but because the, um, Melted milk chocolate's kind of messy. It's nice to have something small to work with. You can use um, a regular butter knife too. So we're, Philip's gluing, gluing, not really gluing, but using the chocolate to put the Hershey Kiss on one side and now lay the Hershey Kiss down with the Nutter Butter. And then you're gonna take a chocolate chip. So go ahead and grab a chocolate chip. So with the other half that's not melted, you're going to use these as your acorn toppers. So Philip's applying some more melted chocolate to this chocolate chip and he's going to place it on top of the Nutter Butter. And that's how you make an acorn bite. They're really good. And what I would recommend doing is putting them in the refrigerator after you get done making plenty of these, you're gonna have them on wax paper. And that way that um, warm chocolate sets up and they stick together a little bit better, okay? Okay. So how about maybe later after we make a ruby snack, we can try some of these together. Does that sound good? You did a really nice job with those. Thank you. So let's set some of this aside. And Ruby's going to come in in just a little bit because she, oh, she maybe she comes, she can come in right now. Ruby, you came here a little early and I like to see that because we are making your ruby snack, which I love. Um, Philip, could you grab the, the cheese balls over there? We have some of our ruby snack mixture already out. What do we have? We've got cheese balls and we have M&M's. Pretzels and raisins. Raisins and we also have goldfish. Goldfish. And this and gummy bears. You use gummy bears. Sometimes we use gummy frogs. So let's dump all of this together. You can start by dumping the M&M's in. Go ahead Philip. Dump the M&M's in. Dump in the pretzels. Dump in the raisins. Goldfish crackers. And gummy bears. And Ruby, what we're going to do next is we're going to stir it up. Why don't you use one of the scoops to stir it up? You want to use that one? And what we'll do is after we get this mixture together for you, Ruby, we'll put it in one of these nice clear bags with a Ruby sticker. And then we'll use one of these pretty silver twisty ties to top it off. Does that sound good? If you would like this recipe for Ruby's Trail Mix, or, or what we like to call it, a ruby snack here at WBGU, or the acorn kisses, you can go to wbgu.org and there are plenty of recipes there. Philip, let's get a few scooped in here. Why don't you scoop a little bit into this bag? That looks really good. Okay, let's do a couple more scoops. Ruby, I'm glad you stopped by because it looks like we have a lot of trail mix. 
Philip, thanks so much for helping me today. You did a great job. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Kelly and I'm here with Philip, and he's going to help me make one of Ruby's craft recipes today instead of a food recipe. And we are going to make glitter slime monsters and they look like this, don't they, when we're all done. We have the glitter slime inside of these baby food jars and we've decorated some of them. So let's show our viewers how to make the glitter slime first. So Philip, would you please squeeze this glitter glue? You could probably make your own glitter glue if you wanted to add squeeze go ahead and squeeze it into the bowl you could maybe make your own glitter glue but they sell glitter glue at the store so that's a nice thing to be able to go get for this recipe we have a bottle of elmer's glitter glue we are going to use one cup of water one teaspoon of borax and we're also going to use an additional tablespoon of water to add to our glue so you're doing a great job there philip he's getting all the glue into a bowl so we have a couple bowls because we're going to have our glue mixture and philip what i'm going to do is I'm going to add a tablespoon of water to your glitter glue. And that's just gonna help us to mix the glue up a little bit more easily. And then we have a separate bowl where I'm gonna pour a cup of water and just a teaspoon of borax. So we'll use just a teaspoon, it's not very much. And borax is what I would call a laundry booster. So it's something to help you do your laundry with. So you're gonna find that in the um, laundry detergent aisle. So I'm gonna mix that up. And Philip, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't you go ahead and pour that in. Make sure it's dissolved all the way quickly. Okay, we're gonna pour the mixture in. And Philip, now you're gonna mix that glue with your fingers into the borax and water mixture. So go ahead and mix it up, get in there. How's it feel? It feels a little sticky. Is it sticky? Does it mm. feel weird? Yeah. Is it cold? Because the water's cold. a little bit cold? Yeah. Okay, so he's making the glitter slime right now. And I think the way Philip's doing it is he's mixing it with the borax, but then he's going to kind of pull it out too as he goes because we don't, what the borax does is it helps harden the glue so it's a little bit easier to play with. But if you leave it in too long, then the slime will get too hard. So how's it feel? It feels all... It looks good. And sticky. Can I feel it? Oh, that feels really fun. Look at that. Okay. What we're going to do now, Philip, is I'm going to have you take that mixture mm -hmm. and you're going to put it in this bowl over here. Okay. And I'm going to wipe my hands off real quick, even though this is pretty messy. It's not too bad, right? And Philip, what we'll do now is fill up one of these baby food jars with the glitter slime. You might have to get your hands in there. Yeah. Pull it out. And oh, put it's it in. getting a little. Uh, is it getting too slimy? It, no, it's getting all uh, a little hard. A little hard. Okay. Yeah. If it gets too slimy or sticky, you can actually put the it, put it back in the water um, and borax mixture. And then, um, so just set that aside, don't get rid of it. And then what we're gonna do next, that looks good. Should we put the rest, do you wanna, that's good for now. We're gonna put the cap on like that. And you can use a variety of things to decorate with. Let's add a little glue. Philip, I see you got a couple of Google Eyes out. So you could buy some Google Eyes from the craft store. And why don't you put some glue on the back of your Google Eyes and then we can find a place to put them. You know, this is something kind of fun because you could put like two eyes on, one eye, five eyes. They're monsters, right? So you can make it look a lot of different ways. Um, we have these little puff balls, different colors that you could add. You could add a ribbon. You can add, we had some plastic rings from a Halloween party that we had. Maybe you wanna add that to make it 
your glitter slime look a little bit more monster-like. Philip's doing a great job with the glue over there. Very precise at his craft. You're doing a great job. If you would like the recipe for glitter slime monsters, you can go to wbgu.org. And you can also find lots of recipes that are edible, right? This one's just kind of a fun craft recipe. I really appreciate your time watching, and I appreciate Philip's help. He's going to put some monster teeth on. Thanks for watching.